host for the program, Coming Home. We began by meeting at uh, a hotel in the ballroom, and from there we, we uh, came upon a property that we are currently at today. And, and, and I get on them all the time. We have to change our thinking if we're ever going to walk in the kingdom of God. Well, hello and welcome to this week's program. If you re happen to see last week's program, I had Pastor Doug Bryce on with Christian Life Center in Decorah, and we were talking last week about uh, the signs of the times and are we living in the last days and will Christ return soon? And if so, uh, and we talked about what some of those signs were and things that are happening in the world and have been happening in the world. And we closed out last week by talking about if, these, if it's true that we're living in the last days and Christ could return, how should we be living? So this week, I am pleased to have as a guest on our program, uh, Mr. Bruce Cox. Bruce is an evangelist. I shouldn't have called you Mr. Sorry, Bruce. He's an evangelist. I'm going to call, refer to him as evangelist. Bruce Cox. Bruce, I welcome you on the program. Thank it's you. good to have you. Bruce is an evangelist, and he's going to share with you a little bit about what that means, what an evangelist calling is. But his ministry, um, most of the people we have on the program are pastors of churches. They, for the most part, shepherd the flock. But an evangelist is one who is sent forth, thrust forth into the marketplace to go and to reach the lost and to proclaim the message of God's kingdom and, and to bring people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, actually introduce them to Jesus Christ. So, Bruce, I'm going to have you share. Bruce is from Des Moines, mm -hmm. and his wife is Teresa, and I would like for you to take a few moments, just maybe three or four minutes, to talk about yourself and how you got saved and how you felt this calling in your heart to tell people about Jesus Christ and to bring them to Him. In the beginning, uh, when I was a teenager, I was an atheist. I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe God was possible. Science was the thing that I followed, and everything that science said and everything that science did. Well, one day when I was walking down the street in Knoxville, I said, God, if you're real, who are you? And I expected to get struck down by lightning bolts, so I hid behind a door. But instead, people came, started coming to me out of nowhere and telling me about Jesus Christ. And from that day forward, I felt the Spirit of the Lord pulling on my heart. And whenever they came, I listened to them. You know, not because I was listening to them, but because, after all, I was an intellectual. And I had to uh, show myself, you know, as an intellectual and, and open-minded, even though I wasn't. One day, I was standing at my job, and I was a dishwasher, and a plate came over in front of me, was covered with a bunch of rotten food, and it was, you know, and I had to clean it up, and I looked at it, and I looked at the plate, and I walked out of my job. And I was hitchhiking, and I took off hitchhiking to Des Moines, thinking, I'm going to get another job. And Gene Lang, from Faith Baptist Church in Knoxville, picked me up, God bless him, and invited me to come to church. So that Sunday, I went to church, and Pastor John, Don Johnston was preaching, and he preached the gospel of Christ. He preached how Christ had died you know, and, and how God had raised him from the dead and how Christ had paid the price for my sins. And he gave the call to, for salvation. And truthfully, I didn't want to get up because I didn't think it was anybody's business that I was a sinner but me. And I didn't have the courage to get up and go forward. And in my head, my head said it didn't, wasn't right, but in my heart, I knew it was the truth. God had revealed this truth to my heart. And thank God for this one girl who got up. She came from the right side of the tracks. I didn't. And she went forward for Christ, and that gave me the courage to get up and go forward. And Don took me downstairs and explained to me the, uh, the gospel and explained to me, and I prayed and received Jesus. And from that day forward, um, my life didn't change immediately, okay? Um, it was three years, and God picked me up out of the life I was in and delivered me and raised me. And he taught me to work because I wouldn't work. He taught me to, to be honest. He taught me, you know, really everything I know. And God gave me um, a heart for other people. See, my dad, the one, one of the things that has inspired me, my dad was a doctor, and he always had said to me that when he was done with his life, he wanted the world to be a better place. 
the only way that you can make this world a better place is through Jesus Christ and through leading people to Jesus Christ. I can help you. I can prolong your life. Okay? I could do this or I could do that for you. But if the Lord can use me to share the gospel of Jesus and to share the truth of Jesus and you'll receive him, that's forever. That's not temporary. And, and, and that's my heart. You know, it, I, I just I cannot bear the idea of any, any human being, any individual going to hell. Yes. For eternity. Amen. You know, and then having to stand before the great white throne of judgment, body and soul, and then get thrown into the lake of fire. You know, not when, when Jesus paid the price. And, and that's my heart. You know, I've been married to my wife for 26 years. She's a wonderful, wonderful wife. I've been blessed uh, in my business, in my work. I worked for the same company for 26 years. Left them in 2010 and started my own business. And the Lord has blessed that business. And the Lord has taken care of us and provided us the opportunity to be able to go out in the marketplace and win souls, both you know, during work hours and also uh, through working fair, working at fairs. Last, uh, we were at the Minnesota Petroleum Marketers Show. One of my competitors was at the booth next to us, and I was able to lead uh, all four of them to the Lord. And they had a religious background, of mm -hmm. course, but uh, you know, the Spirit of the Lord moved, and, and then I had some friends come over from Abundant Life Ministries, and they went out on the floor, and we ended, I actually ended up having 10 people receive the Lord that day, Jeez. which was just awesome. Yes. That's awesome. You know, I was, before I became a pastor, I was in, um, I was a Christian, had been for seven or eight years before I said yes to the Lord to call, to go into full-time ministry, but, but, um, during that time, as you said, you, when you're out in the business world, see, it's pastors are not the ones that beget sheep. Sheep beget sheep. Mm -hmm. And um, so you have it in your, I mean, first of all, you have the burden in your heart that you do not want to see even one lost soul mm -hmm. go to hell. And when you have that in your heart, you, mm -hmm. you can't get away from that. Mm -mm. I mean, you meet people in the marketplace and you look at them and you wonder, it, do they know Christ? Mm -hmm. Is their soul secure? Mm -hmm. And where are they going to spend eternity? Those kinds of thoughts go through your mind and, you're, mm -hmm. and, and you find yourself praying silently in your heart, God, does this person know you? Is there any, any way, Lord, that I can approach them? What, Lord, open a door for me and a, mm -hmm. a conversation for me so that I can find out and, and, and prepare their hearts, Lord, for me to present your gospel to, I mean, it's, 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 that is more probably preeminent in your mind while you're at work mm -hmm. than what your work is. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. It is. I've actually had customers on the phone and salesmen or vendors to us on the phone and been able to witness to them and have them pray with me and receive Christ, mm -hmm. which is just wonderful. Yes. You know, it, I've never feel more alive than when a person prays and receives Christ. It's, yes. it's, otherwise, it, they're, it, it's, a feeling, it's a feeling beyond words. Yes. I, I think about what, what must happen in order to have that passion mm -hmm. for souls. And I think mm -hmm. that first of all, you must have experienced your own personal redemption through Christ. Mm -hmm. You must have been, uh, came to Christ through faith and realized what Christ has done for you and, mm -hmm. and what, your, what your life would have been, what your mm -hmm. destiny would have been without Christ had you not turned to Him. Mm -hmm. And then you see what He's done for you and you say, Lord, I've got to tell other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they came up with a cure for cancer, let's say, mm -hmm. let's say you, you somehow discovered a cure for cancer mm -hmm. and you're out and about and you run into people that have cancer, wouldn't you tell them Mm -hmm. that you have a cure mm -hmm. and exactly. so when you're in the marketplace you see people you see mm -hmm. people struggling with all kinds mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. and you have a solution a hope to give mm -hmm. them don't you exactly exactly and so it's that's what it's like because see in i am probably more evangelist than anything mm -hmm. i'm a redneck evangelist no. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would do anything to get somebody saved. The Apostle mm -hmm. Paul said that. I would mm -hmm. do anything to get somebody saved. Mm -hmm. Become all things to all men that you mm -hmm. might save some and um, without going over the line. But I'm just mm -hmm. saying, so that's been your heart. And you, through your work and your business, you mm -hmm. get to meet lots of people. Mm -hmm. How do you start your day? Generally, I start my day with prayer. Yes. You know, I start my day with prayer. And then, you know, in the evenings, uh, I like to sit down and read the Word a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and some evenings I do, some evenings I don't. Mm -hmm. But I'm always looking for an open opportunity to witness to someone and, and to share the gospel with them, you know. No one has a guarantee. That's right. You know, there's some things the Lord's been showing me lately that really, you know, when I look at God's creation, all right, let's say, for example, you know, I was a great baseball player. And they put us, and I lived my life, and I put, they put a statue up in front of me outside the stadium and everything. You know, in the world's eyes, that, I would be immortalized. Mm -hmm. I would be immortalized, you know, because, because I hit the ball better than anybody else did. Right. Or I was, maybe I was a better pitcher than anyone else was. Okay. Sure. I would be immortalized. But once I'm gone, once that day comes, and I go to sleep forever, okay, what happens to me? That's right. My personality, everything that I was, cannot be duplicated. I am a one of a kind. You are a one of a That's kind. Awesome. You know, the, the, the people who are watching this show, you are a one of a kind. Each of you are a treasure, you know, in the eyes of God. And God gave Jesus for that. He gave Jesus, you know, so that he could have a relationship with us. You know, so that we wouldn't die, so that we wouldn't be forgotten. You know, you look at all the, all the faces that are carved on Mount Rushmore, for example. Not one of those men can come back and talk to you. That's right. You know, you might be able to read some of their writings. You know, you might be able to salute them, you know, or whatever. But they're gone. And they can never be replaced. You know, and, and that's the thing. And I don't care, you know, who you are, where you come from, you know, how you feel about yourself, or whatever. You are a treasure of, you know, to God, yes. and God is in love with you. And that's the truth. Yeah. You know, you've heard this saying, mm -hmm. no doubt, is that God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. Because people think, well, I'm not called to do that. I'm not, you know, but I want to tell you what, probably, I tell people this, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that 85% of ministry is done in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's mm -hmm. out and about. It's not inside the four mm -hmm. walls of a church. Mm -hmm. So I would, um, because my greatest heart's desire is to see people come to know Christ, mm -hmm. I would rather be out in the marketplace than inside the four walls of the church. Mm -hmm. In fact, Jesus said there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner mm -hmm. that gets saved than there is over 99 people in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, every person, every person, I believe this, once Christ has touched your life, you're never the same. Mm -hmm. You've got exactly. a story to tell. Mm -hmm. You know, the blind man said when they asked him about how did this happen? Who did this? How did mm -hmm. this happen? And he said, I don't know. All I know is once I was blind, but now I can see. Mm -hmm. And so for you, mm -hmm. for you, Bruce, it's, it's once I was going down this path, and then I ran into Jesus, mm -hmm. or he ran into me, whichever, mm -hmm. and suddenly my life changed mm -hmm. for the better. Mm -hmm. And so you have a story to tell, and that's called mm -hmm. a testimony. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. When I was uh, an atheist, I didn't believe, you know, that, that God was possible. You know, I thought that God was created by man because man was a weak creature and needed someone to lean on. Wow. God is real. God is alive. You know, Jesus Christ is alive. And God showed that to me. When I walked out of that church after receiving Christ, my mind was saying, none of this makes sense. Right, it just... But my heart said, this is the truth. Yeah. This is the truth. This is real. You know, and this Jesus, you know, whom whom I received as my Lord and Savior, it was the best decision I ever made in my life. And I'm thankful for that, you know. 
I'm very thankful for Jesus, very thankful for the, the days that, that he took the time and put me in the right place. I served as deacon in my church for many years. And uh, then both of our pastors died. And the Lord moved us to a different church after that. Mm -hmm. And we've been allowed the privilege of being able to support a lot of ministries and, and, and seeing a lot of people come to Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, there's 7.1 billion people in the world, roughly. Yes, okay? sir. There's two billion professing Christians in the world. But of those two billion professing Christians, only 26% are saved. 26%. I, I guessed it in the last program, I mm -hmm. guessed it maybe 25%, but mm -hmm. yeah. Now that means 500, that means that here is approximately one and a half billion people that are following Christian values, following Christian faith, thinking they're doing everything right for what their church is telling them, and they're going to hell. And that's, that's sad. You know, that, that's, that's a crime. And, and then you set that aside for just a minute and think about the other five billion people. Jesus said the, uh, the harvest is ripe, but the labor, laborers are few. And in our time working the fairs and going out and talking to people, I've had many people, many church people, you know, who were not born again, who did not know Jesus, yes. you know, who had just been confirmed into the faith, who had been baptized and did not know Jesus. And prayed with me and received Christ. And, and the Lord allowed me to see, you know, a transformation. And you could see the new life and the brightness and the glow in their yes. eyes. And it was just, it was awesome. You know, to know now that though I may never see some of those people again, I will see them in heaven. I will spend eternity Amen. with them. You know, we will be one with God. We will be perfected, you know. And yes. that's, for me, the a great reward yes you know Bruce I want to come back to something you said uh, well first of all I've heard this saying is that one of the greatest mission fields is in the churches mm -hmm. in America because there's many people who attend church have maybe all their life and they, mm -hmm. they don't know that they don't even know that they can know mm -hmm. Christ and have a personal relationship with him mm -hmm. and so people in church are sometimes mm -hmm. one of the greatest uh, missions or missions fields but you, I want to go back to these numbers. There's 7.1 billion people. Think about that. Seven, I don't know how many zeros that is. Mm -hmm. 7.1 billion people. And out of those 7 billion, you said 2 billion mm -hmm. confess faith in mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. So we set those over here. But, but out of those 2 billion, only 26% mm -hmm. or 26.1%, whatever that was, are actually born again believers. Mm -hmm. So that's incredible. I, I've, I'm, I'm a mathematician. I can usually think pretty quick when it comes to numbers. Mm -hmm. So that means about one out of 14 people on the planet mm -hmm. then are true born again believers. Mm -hmm. exactly. One out of 14. Now, before you feel that I'm passing judgment, I'm not, mm -hmm. uh, and neither is Bruce, but mm -hmm. we're saying according to biblical precedent according to what the Bible says that we're all sinners we're all sinners and that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father Jesus said it mm -hmm. himself and he also mm -hmm. said that you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. and not only that but if you are a believer that there is a certain life that you are to mm -hmm. live as a believer so that's what we're talking about because many people Bruce that I meet and you probably people say oh I believe in God mm -hmm. so does the devil Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, what does faith in Jesus Christ look like? What does Christianity, being a Christian, look like? Mm -hmm. Being a Christian, believe it or not, you really don't really look any different than anyone else, you know, other than the fact that you have Christ in your heart. You know, when I walk down the street, the one thing that I notice, you know, is that I, I have a, a, a different answer for that, actually. A guy asked me, what's your definition of a Christian? Okay, what do you think a Christian should be? And my answer to him was, a sinner saved by grace. Yes. And as I left there, I realized that there was no good thing in me. Not one good thing. That's right. The only thing in me is Jesus Christ. Now, does that give me a license to sin? No. You know, the Bible says to, to put to death the deeds of the flesh. 
But because of Jesus Christ and because of his righteousness, you know, I'm able to call myself a Christian and call myself a believer. Yes. You know, and, and what he did. Because the honor and the glory goes to him. He's the one that paid the price. He's the one, you know, who sacrificed his life. And quite frankly, he never sinned. He never did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, he did God's will. You know, that, that, that scripture, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten right. son. But whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Think about that. God loved us so much that he gave Jesus. And Jesus laid down his life. In the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, he prayed, praying, Father, let this cup pass from me. And what was in that cup? But my sins. The wrath of God for my sins. Yep. For your sins, for your sins. For everyone who's ever lived. Jesus took that into himself and became sin for us. Yep. He who knew no sin. And for those of you who don't believe, and don't believe any of this is possible, pay attention to the world around you. You know, 500 million people are not having a mass hallucination. Jesus Christ is real. Yes. Jesus Christ is alive. You know, and it's time to go to God and say, God, please make yourself real to me. Jesus, please make yourself real to me. Show me the truth before it's too late. Amen. You know, it's, um, I remember, you know, I, I remember as a young believer that um, Jesus was profoundly real to me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was really lost. Mm -hmm. And I think that you've got to get people lost before you can get them saved. Mm -hmm. saved. And uh, I knew that I was in, in deep, deep trouble. I knew that I needed somebody to come mm -hmm. along and pull me out. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want to go into the detail of that. But um, Jesus so became so absolutely real. He mm -hmm. was divine peace. He was... Mm -hmm. He was love that you, can, you cannot even describe the love of God. Mm -hmm. that he, you can't imagine it until you experience it. You mm -hmm. can't even define it to somebody else. But the moment that happened for me, I wanted other people to know what happened to me. Mm -hmm. And people that knew me sh shook their heads, at, like with the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. They said, well, I don't know. <laughs> I remember you too well, Roland. I, mm -hmm. I, I find this kind of hard to believe. They had to watch my life mm -hmm. to see that I actually... Had, ex had changed and become a different person. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the thing that I've come to realize is that I tell people that when your relationship with Jesus dries up, you become religious. Mm -hmm. And because it's all mm -hmm. about the relationship with mm -hmm. him that he makes possible for mm -hmm. you. And, but when we don't have any intimacy with Christ, then we practice our religion. Mm -hmm. We go to church. We do mm -hmm. this. We, do, we go through the motions of being a Christian, but we have no intimacy or mm -hmm. life in Him. And I think that's the difference. And I remember publishing an article in the newspaper many years ago: "Are you righteous or are you religious?" Because religion is man's attempt to make himself good enough, or to quiet qualify mm -hmm. himself for mm -hmm. God to accept him by mm -hmm. being. A good person. Mm -hmm. Look at all I've done, God. Look, I mm -hmm. go to church every Sunday, Lord. I do this, I do that. Look at what I have done, in other words. Mm -hmm. Whereas Christianity uh, is realizing that you're a sinner and you can't do a thing to save yourself mm -hmm. or make yourself eligible for, to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And it's only by accepting. I love Romans chapter 5 where he says, the free gift of grace. Mm -hmm free gift of grace. It's mm -hmm. a gift. And the free mm -hmm. gift of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember singing a song as a new believer. He is all my righteousness. Mm -hmm. I stand complete in Him mm -hmm. and worship Him. Mm -hmm. He is my righteousness. And, but I want to turn it back over to you because I, I just mm -hmm. think that, you know, there may be people watching right now, Bruce, that they're good people. Mm -hmm. They really are good people. They, they, they do the very best they can to, to uh, honor God, to pl be pleasing to God, even to, to be good to other people. Mm -hmm. And they, they try not to do the don'ts mm -hmm. the best they can. But it's, it's beyond that, is it not? Exactly. Exactly. It's beyond that in, in the fact that no matter how good you are, you might get nine and a half out of ten commandments right. But the Bible specifically says, if you break the law just in even one small mm -hmm. part, you've broken the whole law. We cannot pay the price for our right. sins. You know, I could save Roland's life, 
and that would not get me to heaven. Roland could save my life. Mm -hmm. That would not get me to heaven, okay? I could go to church every Sunday, read my Bible faithfully, you know, say the Lord's Prayer every day, but that would not get me to heaven. You know, it's that point in your life when in your heart you know the truth, that Jesus Christ is real and you say yes to Jesus and invite him to come into your life. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Admit to him that you're a sinner. That's the point, you know, where you become born again. And the Lord says, I'll put a new spirit inside of you. I'll take away your heart of stone and, and give you a heart of flesh. He promises that to us. You know, the Lord did that for me. You know, through my life, the Lord has been my God. And, and I love him. I love him with all of my heart, and all of my soul, and all of my strength. And, and there's nothing that I am and nothing that I've accomplished in my life that I don't owe to him. Yes. You know, I'm not an educated man. I don't have a diploma up on my wall. You know, in 2008, I went through a very serious depression. I almost died. I almost took my own life. You know, and God took me out of that. God took me to the right place. And in 2009, I had to learn how to think all over again. In 2009, God, I read through the Bible four times from cover to cover. And the Lord restored my mind. And he gave me, you know, a stronger heart for the lost. You know, he showed me his love for people. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't want to judge anyone. That's, you know, but I want to present God's love to you. You know, because of what he's, he's done for me. Mm -hmm. What he's done for me and... and and what he's, he's done for, for my brothers and, and, and the love that I can feel right here, right now with Roland. I just met Roland today, okay? This is something that God has given us. You know, a bond, you know, of, of, of brotherhood, you know. Yes. Uh, there, there was a movie I watched that I just I thoroughly enjoy. It's called Band of Brothers, you know. And, and a bond of brotherhood, you know, and a unity. You know, that we're united for Christ. You know, and... and I want to call the churches, you know, all the born-again Bible-believing churches out there. You know, it's time to quit arguing over the color of the carpet. You know, and, and, and stop citing the sin and start winning the sinners. Amen. You know, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. There's not one person who hasn't. That's right. And we need to get out get on the street, you know, and not expect our pastors to do the soul winning. That's right. Thank you. Know, you. Our pastors work hard for that. Roland? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about this, the 7.1 7 billion, 7 .1 billion people on the planet. Mm -hmm. So um, 5 billion of those have maybe never even heard the gospel or they are rejected the gospel or they are of some other religion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... So that means that there is uh, about 10 out of 14 people that need to be reached mm -hmm. with, with the gospel message. And then there's the three out of 14 who confess faith in Jesus Christ but don't really have a relationship with him. And then there's that one out of 14 that is a born again believer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, would like to, I would like to say to the to the, the 10 out of the 14 that Christ died for every single person mm -hmm. and that salvation is a, gift, a free gift that is offered to everyone who will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. come to him and receive his gift of pardon mm -hmm. and receive the gift of his righteousness mm -hmm. and the gift of his spirit. Mm -hmm. That is available to any person to the, to the three out of 14 who confess faith in Jesus Christ, but you have never truly met Christ, I would encourage you to begin to pursue God with your heart. Say, Lord, you know that I believe in you, but I don't really know you. You know, that's the most honest thing you can do, mm -hmm. is to say, Lord, I, do, I believe in you, but Lord, I don't know that you've ever been real to me. I don't know that I really know you. I'm not even sure that if I died, I would go to heaven. 
And I believe if you'll seek someone out, let them minister to you, let them pray with you to take that step because it is a step that we take in giving ourselves up to Jesus Christ. And as for the one out of 14 that knows him, you, you can't hide your light under a bushel, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. You cannot hide your... You have a testimony mm -hmm. of what Christ has done for you. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid, whether it's in your workplace or in your neighborhood or in the grocery store, wherever it is, don't be afraid to tell people about what Christ has done for you. Amen? And so with that, I'm going to ask you to stay tuned for the second half of our program as Bruce brings you... A very special message, which I kind of have a little bit of a clue about because we talked about it already, mm -hmm. and it's going to touch your heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching this program. Hi, I'm Bruce Cox. And first, before I begin, I want to thank KFXB, and I also want to thank Pastor Roland for this opportunity to share the gospel with you. Uh, we just finished our, my interview with uh, Pastor Roland, and I want to speak to each one of you personally. But first, let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before the throne of grace, and thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share your gospel, and thank you for all the people that are watching right now who will hear your word and receive you as Lord and Savior. I pray that you open hearts and minds that you would write your word on their heart and that you would draw people to yourself in Jesus name and I thank you for that amen like I was saying I want to speak to each one of you personally it's time to think about something are you 50 percent 75 percent or 100 percent sure you're going to heaven think about that for just a minute there are three things that God cannot do. God cannot lie, God cannot change, and God cannot let you into heaven unless you are born again. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So are you born again? Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you trusted his righteousness? Or are you living on your own good works. Contemplate these things. And I'll ask you a second question. If you could choose between heaven and hell, which would you choose? Would it be heaven or would it be hell? If you could choose between life or death, which would you choose, life or death? You see, God is not the God of the dead. He is the God of the living, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Jesus, the God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And God has a message for you, for you personally. You know, the Bible was written for each of us to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. God loves you. And the Bible says, Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a religious leader of his day, and he came to Jesus by night. And he said, Master, we know that you are someone come from heaven because of the things that you do. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus asked the obvious question, How can I be born a second time? Can I enter a second time into my mother's womb? And Jesus said, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What does that mean? Take the context as it is in place. Where are you when you're in your mother's womb? You're in water. You must be born first. But when you are born, You know, your soul is alive, your body's alive, but your spirit, your ability to communicate with God is not. The reason it is not is because of sin. Now let's go back. Let's go back in time for a minute. 
Let's go to the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, let us therefore make man in our own image. And God created man of the dust of the ground. And God put the man in the Garden of Eden. And that man's name was Adam. And he told Adam, of all the trees in the garden you, you may eat, except for the tree of the no fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. That tree you may not eat of. Because in that day ye shall surely die. God saw that Adam needed a help meet. So he caused him to fall into a deep sleep, and he took his rib, and he created Eve. And he put Eve in the garden with him, and they were naked. And they were innocent. And they were one with God. They were alive. And the serpent came to Eve, and he said, If you eat of this tree, if you eat of this fruit, you'll become like gods. You know, knowing both good and evil. So Eve took the fruit and ate of it and gave it to Adam. And Adam ate of the fruit also. And at that moment, that very moment that he took a bite of that fruit, he died. He spiritually died. His ability to communicate with God, his ability to fellowship with God, died. And God came to them, and Adam and Eve hid themselves, and he said, why are you hiding? He said, because we're naked. And he said, who told you you were naked? And he said, the woman gave me of the fruit. And I ate it. And God, and, and God looked, said to the woman, the woman said, and Eve said, the serpent, you know, he beguiled me. God made the first promise of a Savior right there. He said, I'll put enmity between thy, thee and thy seed. He was speaking to the serpent. The moment Adam sinned, he sold out the human race. And God cursed the ground for his sake. And God said, I'll put, to the serpent, he said, I'll put enmity between thee and thy seed. And thou shalt bruise his head, and you shall bruise his heel. Speaking of, Jesus would bruise the serpent's head, and the serpent would bruise Jesus' heel. God made a sacrifice for Adam and Eve at that time because it talks about God making skins for him. Now let's come back. Let's come back forward to our day. And let's take a look at something. Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. You know, that seed that passed from Adam through did not pass to Mary because the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and caused her to become pregnant with Jesus. But what does this all mean? What does it all mean to you? What does it all mean to me? Is this Jesus that I talk about? Is he real? Let's take a look at his word for just a minute. Matthew 24, Jesus was sitting upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Right now, in the world, there are nine people that claim to be Jesus Christ. These are the top nine, I should say. Sergi Torop, he has 10,000 followers. Oscar Romero Ortego Hernandez tried to kill Obama, President Obama, saying that he believed that President Obama was the Antichrist. Wayne Bent has 50 followers. Apollo Quill, a boy from the Philippines, has 6 million followers. An Song Hong has 2,650 churches and 1.75 million registered members. Alan John Miller from Australia has 50 followers who've moved to Queensland with him. Inri Cristo from South America has hundreds of followers. And David Shaler, who's from Great Britain, who claims to be Christ. Estimated in the 1990s by Syracuse University that there are over 2,000 practicing gurus calling themselves Christ. What does this mean? 
This right here confirms that the Word of God is true. It confirms that the Bible is true. It confirms that the things that Jesus said are true. And that these things are coming to pass rapidly. And this time of grace, this age of grace, this opportunity for you to be born again and to have a personal relationship with Christ is rapidly, rapidly coming to a close. Listen to some more. Um, verse 6, And ye shall hear of war, wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Number of countries involved in wars right now are 64. The number of militias and guerrillas and separatist groups involved are 591. And according to a new summary on geopolitical risks by German financier Deutsche Bank, 11% of the global is currently embroiled in a conflict that involves armed combatants. With the potential for a mass global escalation, the highest it has been in several decades. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Famines. The world is facing a hunger crisis unlike anything it has seen in more than 50 years. 925 million people are hungry. 30 million people a year die of hunger. 2014 was recorded as the hottest year on record. If I go down to you know, and look at the pestilences, diseases, EVD-68, new virus targeting children nationwide causes concern in California. The virus tends to hit youth between the ages of six months to 16 years of age. HIV, AIDS, 136,000 people infected in Europe last year. Avian influenza, bird flu, cholera, Hendra virus, virus infection, influenza, seasonal and pandemic, leptospirosis, meningitis, Nipah virus inspection, plague, Rift Valley fever, SARS and coronavirus infections. Tularemia, a viral, it's a viral, hemor viral hemor hemorrhagic fevers. Ebola, Marburg, Lassa, Crimean Congo, hemorrhagic fever. Viral hepatitis A, a B, C, and E. Currently there are 116,000 cases of Ebola and 56 189 deaths due to the virus. Right here, this confirms the Word of God. This confirms that the Bible is true. This confirms that the end times are upon us. And this is not even the tip of the iceberg. If you think there have been more earthquakes than usual this year, you're right. A new study finds there were more than twice as many big earthquakes in the first quarter of 2014 as compared with the average since 1979. Recently, major earthquake hit Nepal. Many people were killed. A second major earthquake hit Nepal. Yesterday, a 6.8 earthquake hit Japan. Earthquakes in diverse places. What does this mean? It's time to wake up. It's time to listen to your heart. It's time to know that God loves you. It's time to know that God loves you beyond anything you can possibly imagine. You may have sinned. You have, may have made a mistake. But God loves you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. 
You see, Jesus, going back for a minute, Jesus being born of the Virgin Mary, the curse did not pass through to him. Jesus is called the second Adam in the book of Corinthians. The first Adam was a living soul. Jesus Christ is a quickening spirit, a life-giving spirit. When you're born, your body's alive, your soul's alive, but your spirit is not. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks after God. It is God who is seeking you. It is God who is drawing you to himself. It is God who has brought me here today to share this message with you. It is God who is literally drawing you to himself, who's showing you in your heart that this is the truth. It is God who raised Jesus from the dead. See, God knew that you couldn't do it on your own. God knew that you could not fulfill the law. So God sent Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was praying. And he was saying, Father, if it be at all possible, let this cup pass from me. What was in that cup was the wrath of God for every sin committed by every human being who's ever lived. Jesus took that into himself and he was beaten for our sakes. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He was beaten for our sakes. He was bruised. The Bible says his visage, his appearance was marred more than any. And they nailed him to a cross and put him on public display. And he cried out, Eli, Eli, Laboxani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why? Because of me. Because of my sins. Because of you. Because of your sins. But then he cried out, It is finished which means paid in full. Your debt was paid. My debt was paid. Jesus paid the price. And he put his blood on the altar in heaven. But he went to hell in our place. The Bible says, Thou shalt not suffer the Holy One to see corruption. And on the third day, he took the keys of hell and death out of the hands of Satan and God raised him from the dead. A real living person who was alive and was dead and is alive forevermore. And he defeated hell and death for our sakes. See, it's not God's will that you should perish. Hell was not created for man. Hell was created for Satan and his angels. And God raised Jesus from the dead. He showed himself to more than 500 people. He performed miracles that there's not enough books that can contain them all, you know, to prove that he is alive. And he said to us, he said, you know, go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. Jesus is a real living person. He sits on the right hand of God. And God gave him a name above all names, that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, by one man's sin, Adam, death and condemnation came upon all of us because all of us have sinned. But by one man's righteousness, Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all of us under justification of life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Have you sinned? Have you made mistakes? 
The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. There's not one person who's righteous. There's not one person who hasn't sinned. Not one. But imagine something. Just for a moment. Imagine this. If you had a child, and that child had leukemia, the child had to go through a bone marrow transplant, that child is in isolation, and you can't go in the room. You can't go in there and hug them. You can't touch them. Because they take their immune system down to the point where if you do, there's a possibility they could die. Or they, might, or they would die. And you're standing outside the glass and you're looking in and your heart is aching. It's in pain because your child's laying in that bed and there's not a darn thing you can do. There's nothing you can do. But God, He's standing on the outside knocking on your heart's door right now. And there's something that He did. He paid the price. He sent Jesus to die. He sent Jesus so that he could have a relationship with you and I, so he could heal us, so he could give us eternal life and eternal salvation so that we would not perish, we would not go to hell. He would be able to, to hug us and to hold us and to teach us and to be our Father and to be one with us. That is God's passion. That is God's love. And it is not his will. Not his will that anyone should perish. So do you want to be 100% sure of heaven? Do you want to know that you're going to heaven? Do you want to have a personal relationship with the God of gods and the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible says the word is near you. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. And that is the word of faith which we preach. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. This is for with your heart you believe unto righteousness and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed. And three times in the Bible, three times it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And whosoever includes you. Yes, you. So I ask you right now. Will you pray with me? And receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? This is strictly between you and God. And please pray this prayer with me and receive him now. Because you don't have a guarantee of the next second, and neither do I. But pray this out loud with all your heart to God. Dear Father in heaven, I come before you right now. And I admit to you that I am a sinner. And I ask that you forgive me for my sins. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior. I'll live my life for you and Jesus I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. And thank you for my salvation. 
In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed through that prayer with all your heart to God, you are born again. And there's some things. First, pray and ask the Lord to take you to a good church. A good church that preaches the gospel of Christ. And now is the time, whether you've been baptized before, now is the time to be baptized because it's an outward sign of just what happened in, in your heart. You died with Christ and you're raised again with him from the dead. And the Holy Spirit comes in with your spirit and brings you to life and that is called the down payment of your redemption. Your name is being shouted throughout heaven right now because there's more joy in heaven over one sinner that repents than over 90 and 9 just persons. <coughs> so I'll give you this advice. If someone sins against you, forgive them. And secondly, remember something. It's by the righteousness of Christ and his righteousness that gets us into heaven, not our own. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for everyone who's listened to this sermon. And I thank you for everyone who has prayed and accepted you as Lord and Savior. I ask you to take them into your arms now, Lord. Let them experience the new life that you've given them. Draw them to a body who will love them and nurture them and raise them in Jesus' name. And I thank you for that, Lord. Know this, God loves you. And he that cometh unto Jesus, he will in no wise cast out. May the Lord be with you May your day be blessed. Take your Bible and start with the book of John. That will give you a solid foundation in the faith. And thank you. And I want to once again thank KFXB and Pastor Roland. And I want to thank the Lord for the opportunity to share this with you. Mm -hmm.